push. <laughs> I went to England and Paris with my partner. I wanted to show what I got. So I'll start with what we bought in England. We didn't really buy that much because we were going to buy a lot in France. We went to Marks and Spencer. It's weird. It's like a Target and grocery store and some of them sell clothes, some of them strictly sell food. Very weird experience. Um, but the cookies are fuck. <laughs> so my partner and I got a lot of their biscuits. I got the almond biscuits. They're really good. I bought a pack when we were there and almost finished them so then I bought another one. They're really cheap too. My great aunt was telling me that a lot of grocery prices went up and we went to the store expecting things to be really expensive because that's what everyone was saying but the prices there were still cheaper than something California prices I'm sure it was like a big increase for people to live there but we were like oh this is a steal <laughs> and then we went to Little I think is how you say it like a different grocery store also where they sold like non-grocery store things and they had little Capture machines. So I got a couple. This one is called a cosplay critter. <laughs> it's like an animal dressed like another animal. I got a couple for my friends because I thought they were really cute. We got. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Nick and I got one cosplay critter for ourselves. <laughs> it's a dog. He <laughs> looks ridiculous. He's kind of ugly, but I like that, and I think my friends are gonna like it. We went bird watching, which was really fucking cool, and in one of the visitor centers, they had little gifts, and they had these finger puppets. I'm gonna shove my finger up him. There we go. <laughs> one is a hedgehog, the other is a duck, or mallard. They're called smalls. Wait, that's so cute. I didn't know that's what they were called. Don't these go hard? <laughs> this is just gonna be a puppet show now. They're friends. Then my partner and I went shopping one day and I passed by this store window that was just full of Moomin merch. And I love Moomin. I have some Moomin merch, but it's slightly less popular in the states it's way more popular in europe so i got him <laughs> he's so cute i don't have any woman plushies and i just thought he was really cute like come on i could not resist him he's so little and the last thing that i bought in england was a slip dress from a thrift store called the Vintage Scene. I have it here, but I'll insert clips of me trying it on. It's just like a simple white slip dress, like a short one. It has this really pretty lace bodice detail and these like crocheted blue flowers. This, technically, I bought this on Depot months ago but it was in the UK so I had it shipped to my great aunt's house. It's this dress from and other stories. I don't know where I saw someone wearing this online and I just thought it was such a beautiful dress. It's black velvet and then the top is little pearl flowers. It's so cute, so precious. I think that's pretty much everything that I bought from England. Alright, so the first couple things we got in Paris were some souvenirs. So the first thing I got was a snow globe for my mom. Actually, it wasn't really the first thing I bought. Um, it was one of the last things I bought because... So when I was, I don't even know how old, seven, eight years old maybe, my brother and I were 
just fucking goofing around inside the house, like roughhousing and whatnot, whatever you do when you're like eight years old. And my mom had this really big cabinet, like a, not like a floor to ceiling cabinet, but close. And it had a bunch of souvenirs from her trips. And she had gone to Paris, I think before I was born, and she got a snow globe. I think you see where this is going. <laughs> my brother and I, I don't know what happened, but one of us pushed the other into the cabinet. The globe fell, broke all over us. <laughs> we got a bunch of the glittery snow globe water <laughs> on us, and we had ruined my mom's uh, snow globe. So I bought her a replacement. I was trying so hard to find one that looked like the one we broke, but I was a kid, and I don't have good memory. I think my mom will appreciate the sentiment of, you know, trying to replace this. Pretty sick. The next thing I bought was a fridge magnet for my friend. She said that anywhere she travels, she tries to get a fridge magnet, so I found this one, and it's a little, like, tacky, but I think it's really cute. It's just, like, a teddy bear some croissants and macarons and like the Eiffel Tower. I don't know, I just think it's kind of cute. And then my partner and I went into a patisserie and we saw these little chocolates. So we each bought one for our moms. My partner bought Pokemon cards for his little brother. They are in French. The next group of items is from Claude Monet's house in Giverny. It was like Disneyland. <laughs> It was like the one place I let myself buy like, real like souvenir type shit for myself in the house. I also bought a couple things for my friends. I bought this tote bag I thought was really cute. It has like a painting of Monet's garden on the front. I think it's really cute. And then I bought her some tea. It's bergamot vanilla. It smells really good. For my partner's mom, got this tea towel that has an embroidery of the water lilies and bridge. The lighting's kind of ass, isn't it? I got a set of note cards. So it's 10 note cards with envelopes. My partner bought me a letter writing set, I don't even remember when, maybe a year ago for my birthday, got me a pen with a quill and some really nice uh, paper with envelopes and a wax, like the little wax wicks that you light the end and then drip it onto the candle and seal it. It's so sick. I don't use it super often, mostly for like birthdays or special events as a card. This is like not stupid. I don't know, they got my ass. It's miel de fruit honey from the flowers of the garden of Claude So, it's just a jar of honey. <laughs> Let me see how it smells. It smells good. It's kind of solid. It kind of solidified it. Oh, this expired. The fuck? It says, a consommé de préférence à bon de May 25th, 2023. Yeah, that's it. I didn't check the expiration date. I mean, it's honey. Does honey, does honey expire? I bought a huge, like, vat of honey from Costco, and I used like half of it. So you know, worth the money. But the second half, I didn't use in time, and it crystallized. And I looked up online how to decrystallize honey, and I tried. I put it in like a bowl of warm water and stirred it and it worked um but not for very long it just crystallized again so i had to toss it because it would just come out completely solid well damn <laughs> that sucks i'm gonna look it up and see if i can still eat it but yeah <laughs> it'd be like that the last thing i got from shiverny we went to the gift shop at the very end and we bought all our stuff and then we walked out and then as we were walking out or outside and i look at the visitor center and they have this poster and i was like that's so cute they must sell that and i didn't see it inside and my partner was like i saw a bunch of print and prints that are inside i just 
don't know, was not paying attention. So we asked if we could go back into the gift shop as opposed to re-entering the entire estate. So I went back in and bought the poster. This, I think it'll look really good in my living room because as you can see, <laughs> the couch is a light pink. Uh, a lot of stuff in here is like a light pink. Um, the bar, the shelves. So I feel like this will look really good on the wall. I just have to buy a frame for it. Like, tell me that is not the cutest thing. And it was only five euros. What the fuck? So that was everything from the journey. And then we went to Saint-Ouen. It was a huge flea market. One of the stalls we went into had this really cool book. It is a coffee table book, which I said we were not supposed to buy because we have a whole stack of coffee table books in the living room. But this is really sick. It was only two euros. It's like a catalog of a bunch of items that were sold at an auction from 1999. And then we went to one shop that was selling vinyls. We got this one. It's sax slow foam. So I'm assuming it's just like sexy saxophone music. I got it. It's a copy of You're the One That I Want from the hit movie Grease. <laughs> oh, and I just realized on the back is Alone at a Drive-In movie. And that's cool. I, didn't, I thought it was just one song. It's two. I just thought it was really sick. It's silly because this is from California <laughs> and I bought it there. The cover is really sick too. It has a bunch of cows or bulls on it. I don't know why. <laughs> Very cute. And then the last record we bought, Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> My partner bought it as a gift to a friend. The last thing I got from the flea market was a print. The flea market was one of the first places we went. I walked into the shop with a bunch of jewelry and old books, and then there was a whole section of original art. And I found a few art pieces that I really liked. I was just trying to be mindful of what I was buying because I knew that we were doing a lot of shopping and it was our first stop. It is this original art print. It has like pops of pink, which is something that I look for, like living room art. That's everything from the flea market. My partner and I went to a bookstore in Paris. We had seen a sign for it on a lamppost, just randomly advertising it on a flyer. So we walked to it right before it was closing. The Storekeeper was so nice. I got a copy of Pride and Prejudice. I've been looking for a copy for a while and they had some really, really cool ones. Some like limited edition ones, like shiny paper, um, but they were like 30 bucks. Um, this one was like 10 euros and it fit in my carry-on. And I don't have a copy of Pride and Prejudice and it's one of my favorite books that we read in school. Nick got this, which is the Looting Machine, Warlords, Oligarchs, Corporations, Smugglers, and the Theft of Africa's Wealth. I am interested to read it. And then <laughs> the last couple things we bought. We went to the Venus. <laughs> I got something and Nick got something. Not the rumba, please. Later. Nick got this bracelet. He wanted to buy the pearl bracelet, but I told him I think this one would like suit him. And it was, I believe, 110 euros. So definitely not cheap, but cheaper than uh, US prices. I didn't check the price on this piece specifically, but it seemed that everything in the Paris Vivian Westwood store was significantly cheaper than what it costs in the U.S. <laughs> Doing a little... I was gonna say mukbang, I'm not eating the box. <laughs> a little ASMR unboxing. Give him one of these, hit him with the... It's like a light silver with some rhinestones, fake diamonds, not sure, in the center. Really cute. And then I got, 
I mean, I feel like I see so many people with this, and I'm not immune. <laughs> I had been wanting this for I don't know how many months, years. I feel like I've been wanting it for at least a year. I got the mini Boss Relief Joker. I got it in gold. I'm doing this again because I'm extra and why not? It's like a bag in a box in a bag <laughs> type beat. I tend to wear a lot of like preppy, coquette type shit, like very pastel. So I feel like this goes with a lot in my closet. I think it's just so pretty. This isn't really the right outfit for it but I don't feel like clasping it, so I'm holding it. It was 170 euros, which is like 185 US dollars, which is a pretty good deal because in the US, if you buy it in store in America, I believe it's 240 US dollars or 270 including shipping, something like that. So almost $100 off, which is I think a pretty good deal. If you spend over 100 euros in a shop, you also get a VAT tax return. As long as you get the form from the shop, you just scan it at the airport. You could justify, you know, spending this money while you're abroad because the prices are cheaper and you get a little bit of your money back. I'm really excited about this because I wanted it for a long time and I couldn't really justify it because almost $300 on a necklace is a lot. 200 like, it's, it's steep. Um, it's only because I have been looking at it for so long that I knew I still wanted it and was going to wear it. I wore it once in Paris and I thought it was really cute, so I was very excited about that. I'm like sweating. I closed the window so that we wouldn't get all the fucking background noise, but now I'm really bored. The last thing I bought, <laughs> I can't even call it toxic. It's something alright. When I was planning on going to Paris, I had talked to like my mom and a couple friends about possibly getting a designer print. I looked at prices and you know just thought about it and I just couldn't justify spending that much money on something. And you know my friends and my family were telling me you know I've worked hard, you deserve it. And even if that is true, I don't know. I know that I work hard and deserve them. I mean, most people work hard and deserve nice things, really. The majority of people do. But, like, I had the privilege to buy these things, and even my partner and I, when we went into some of the stores, you know, we saw so many rich people, like, genuinely wealthy people, not, you know, working class. I make a decent amount, but, like, I still, I work full-time. I don't know. I don't need to justify my purchase, but I guess just my philosophy as a leftist, I want to be mindful when I'm spending this much money on something. I realized I didn't really want to buy brand new because the purses I was looking at were leather and buying brand new leather, I don't know, just doesn't sit right with me for many reasons, environmentally, etc., ethically. As well as, you know, ethical consumption under capitalism is hard, but generally it is better to buy secondhand when you can. So I went to about a dozen vintage designer stores. The bag that I ended up buying was from Collector's Square. I can't recommend them enough. They were really nice. They had a great selection. You go into the store and they set you up on the website and everything is up to date. I had gone to a couple stores that had a similar setup with, you know, a website that you look through, but a lot of the bags that I tried to see said that it was available, they said they weren't there. This store, it was like a really seamless process. It felt quite luxe. It was weird. I guess the other vintage designer stores I went into some of them were nice, but it wasn't like that experience because one of my friends told me, you know, you should buy a brand new purse, you get the experience, you know, they bring you like champagne and drinks and stuff. And I was like, I don't really know that I want that, but they offered that here. It was nice. I looked at about four bags there. Luckily, this was our last stop. I felt like the Collector Square had a lot of good 
pastel options because that's what I was looking for personally. So I'll just shut up and <laughs> show the fucking bag already. <laughs> so what I ended up getting was a Chanel. <laughs> And I have been wanting Chanel for years, probably since high school. The price of Chanel keeps going up and up. I think like a classic flap is like eight to ten thousand dollars now, which is a lot. I'm trying to be really careful with it. This is her. This is from their 2003 collection, I believe. It is, I believe they called it the Choco Bar model model and I sound like a car. It's called the Choco Bar in like a baby pink. It is so precious and I feel like it's the perfect size for me. My partner's clowning me because he feels like I have a lot of bags this size but I feel like I can like throw my phone or my camera and like you know whatever. The color may not show up a hundred percent but it is so pretty. It has this little like camellia flower on one of the straps and if you open it, you can pull the chain out. I was told to store it inside. So it has this long strap so you can wear it crossbody if you like. I personally don't like wearing crossbody. Like, like that. I think the way that I personally would wear it is wrapping the strap once or twice around the inside of the flap. So you just do that like this. I feel like that is a good length. And then if I want it even shorter, I can do that again. So I feel like the way I would probably wear it is like this, like a little baguette bag over the shoulder. Ugh, it's so precious. I would say it's in decent condition, definitely secondhand. It has some wear. I'm really happy with this purchase. It was just under 2,000 euros, which again is a lot of money, I recognize that. It's the best I could find for a Chanel this size. Because um, this isn't like big by any means. There are much larger Chanel's. But I went into a different vintage designer store that had a Chanel, I want to say like almost half the size of this, like pretty much like a belt bag size. And that was, I think, $2,000. And it was really cute, but I was like, I can't even, I can't put anything in there. I could maybe put my phone in it. And that's it. So, you know, it, it's relative, the pricing of bags. That's why I went to so many places and wanted to get a good deal. I haven't worn it yet. I'm definitely wearing this to the Barbie movie. Definitely this was like the last thing that I bought. I had bought the pearl necklace a few hours before we went into the store and I ended up buying this. And I was like, shit, I should not have bought that necklace. And then I didn't buy anything else after that. So. And I think that was everything that I got during my time in Paris and England. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope everyone is doing well and I will see you in the next video.